Warriors cross swords beneath the gaze of the ancient gods. Okay, time for some sparring. Is that any way to treat a lady? Battles one. Fight! Stay down! <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Tom here and today I'm looking at Soul Calibur 6 running on the PC and to join me to talk about that is the man who actually grabbed all of this footage straight from Namco's HQ, or we should say Bandai Namco, Dave Beaton. Hey Tom. Hey, how's it going? So this is the latest Soul Calibur, a series that's always been a kind of technical showcase for whatever console it happens to be running on. If you remember the original Soul Calibur on Dreamcast, significantly better version than the arcade. Really, it showed off what that team could do, you know, at 60 frames per second. And so fast forward almost 20 years and we have Soul Calibur 6 running on Unreal Engine 4. So I want to ask you a few things about it. Firstly, what are we looking at here? What's in the demo? So it's running on the PC, the first fully functioning PC version they've got. And I think specs wise they had an i5-6600K paired with a GTX 1080 for the event. And the demo itself was pretty limited in what they had. There's two stages, which is a shrine stage and a snow-capped mountain. And there were six characters, five old fighters and one of the new characters called Grohl, I believe. Is that any way to treat a lady? But yeah, it's good to see the returning cast and definitely uh, a sign that this is a return to the kind of the original game's style. So uh, technically, this is a 4K capture of the game as well. Yep, so I tried the game at 4K and 1080p and settled on 4K because I could get decent results from it. And yeah, it just looks wonderful seeing it's such a high pixel count, those crisp visuals, really a good way to show off this latest release. Um, it is worth saying we'll be showing the kind of performance on the GTX 1080 a bit later in this video, but needless to say, you know, this is an early build. Yeah, that's right. And I was also told that it's not an optimized build at all. So this is literally just the one they've got working, running 60 frames per second a lot of the time, but it's worth stressing that, yeah, the performance metrics are far from final. So we're probably going to get much better results with the final game. First impressions for me, just looking at your footage, you know, it's clear there's a technical overlap with the work on te a game like Tekken 7, which, you know, used the same engine, uh, lots of the similar impact physics on the floor and, uh, you know, all that stuff. But obviously the Soul Calibur series over the last few years has taken its own direction. It's obviously a weapons-based fighter, but visually, aesthetically, I think Soul Calibur 5 had uh, it was a bit of an experiment. It was a bit darker, very detailed, beautiful game, but it used uh, Namco's own custom engine and kind of replaced the whole roster with a, a younger generation, a, a new cast, if you like. So it's nice to see this coming back to form, the original uh, group of characters. But it's worth asking, really, what are the improvements next to a game like Soul Calibur V? Well, one of the things with uh, Soul Calibur VI is that uh, on an artistic level, uh, Soul Calibur V and indeed 4 were more dark and gritty, whereas as this game is set during the same time period as the first Soul Calibur, it's sharing more of that sort of bright, clean, colourful art style. But on a technical level, there's a huge amount of improvement compared to Soul Calibur V in pretty much every area. So the most impressive thing here initially that hits you is the increase in geometry complexity and level of detail. It's just a huge upgrade over the last game, so much more in terms of the amount of objects on screen whether it be the trees in the background or sort of the level of uh, brickwork on the temple I suppose that stems from the fact that this series has always sold on you know very high poly character models and the motion capture work was always revolutionary at the time with the original Soul Calibur and you know that stays in place here but Clearly the geometric designs and the way they've improved the materials and the lighting with the Unreal Engine 4, that's where I think Soul Calibur 6 makes its mark. Yeah, I definitely agree there. You know, if we go back to like Soul Calibur 5, the lighting looks very good for its time, but uh, it's a lot sort of sharper, not really harsh, but it's not quite as natural as in Soul Calibur 6. In the latest game, you really get the feeling that the characters take on more of a, a three-dimensional pop. And when you look at the way the lighting sort of reacts with the characters, the actual skin shaders themselves, 
that again they're going for a, a quite a nuanced look compared to say Tekken 7 which aims for more of a CG look this tends to fall more in line with the previous Soul Calibur games but just gives it a modern edge so more realistic uh, shaders I can sense you know a slight anime uh, influence in there I think that's always kind of crept in especially after the first Soul Calibur but yeah they've, they definitely veer towards the more classical more traditional stuff certainly in terms of the material work but definitely when you think Unreal Engine 4 you think shaders and you also think physically based rendering and I think that ties a lot into it. I mean, the skin look, you know, it's got this softness that I, I think really makes it stand out next to that sharp look on the uh, Soul Calibur 5. Not to mention, obviously, Soul Calibur 5 ran at 720p back in the day on the uh, PS3 and 360. So to see it jump all the way here to 4K is obviously a major sticking point. So high polygon count, lighting, increased resolution, but there's also stuff like uh, the physics side of Unreal Engine 4, which really kind of catches the eye. In the older Soul Calibur games, certain things like the cloth physics and animation, some of it was more sort of uh, hand animated, but with Unreal Engine 4 we've got proper physics with the clothing, so it does react more naturally when characters are performing their moves, it kind of sways about. Yeah, we saw it first with Street Fighter V, obviously, with all the accessories and hair on, you know, notably the hair on some characters. Uh, here you can definitely see it on Killy's clothing, you know, the way the, uh, the clothing flaps around his legs. It's all dynamic and that just feel, makes it feel more alive. Um, Post-processing is another major factor of the engine. To be honest, the original Soul Calibur didn't have much of any post-processing back in the day. It couldn't really afford it on the hardware there. But uh, in this case, we get that strong depth of field effect in the background. Well, now we've talked about this between us uh, before recording this video and you know, you're not a fan of this, are you? Not particularly, no. I think they introduced it in Soul Calibur 5, which kind of blurred the backgrounds on a more permanent basis. Uh, and in this one, uh, my main complaint, I guess, is that the depth of field can be quite strong at times. So when the characters move closer together, there's like a dynamic depth of field in place. So when the characters move closer, the depth of field becomes really strong. When they move away, it becomes uh, less so. Definitely, it mimics the properties of a camera. You know, that shallow depth of field comes up when you have a tighter focus and when it becomes a, a wider lens you get to see uh, more in the background. Compared to the Soul Calibur 5, the actual quality of the depth of field is much better, obviously. But in this case, I'm glad you do actually get to see the quality of those backgrounds. I mean, imagine all the hard work that went into uh, their design and then for some post-process effect to suddenly wipe out all the perceptible detail it's kind of a shock but here if you stand far enough away and you play kind of a long range game, yeah, you do get to see a beautiful background. It's one of those things where I think the effect itself is handled beautifully. Uh, personally, I would like to see less of it or an option to turn it off so you could really appreciate all that detail in the background. But, you know, I think it generally does work quite well and it's one of those things that's down to taste. Some people are going to absolutely love it. Other people, you know, might not. Uh, it's worth noting that there were no graphics settings options at the event. You get the versus mode and you just play, so, you know, no way to tweak it there, but maybe, maybe in the final build we'll get that option. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see because there was literally no options in the demo. You can only choose player versus player, player versus CPU, uh, no title screens. There wasn't any way of seeing what settings this is running at, whether you might be getting console settings, whether you can turn off certain post-processing. None of the, the usual features were working, even the Unreal Engine 4 command line interface that we usually go to if a certain effects aren't in the options, that wasn't there either. So it's really an early build where they're kind of showing you what the developers want you to see, their kind of way of presenting the action in a way they feel uh, best represents the series. And I gotta say, overall, when you combine all the visuals together, it really does look quite impressive. Yeah, it is gorgeous. Uh, the fact is, though, we don't know what settings this is running at, but we can presume it is the high setting to show it off on a, such a powerful card. Battles won. As we promised, you know, the performance side of things on a GTX 1080 is worth sampling and obviously not taken as red for how it will be uh, in the final build, but yes, definitely 4K on this card doable right? It is uh, actually possible to do 4k running at 60 frames per second uh, even when there's quite a lot of stuff going on like special moves and whatnot. Uh, the only thing I will say is as this is an early build performance can be erratic regardless of resolution so I played the game both extensively in 1080p and 4k and I noticed quite a lot of stutters and heavy frame rate drops at points at 1080p and in 4k. 
usually this kind of happens where you get one round's perfectly smooth there's very little uh, issues whatsoever and then the next round you'll get a lot of frame rate drops yeah that's very odd isn't it if one whole round plays out perfectly then the next is suddenly dropping erratically to the 40 fps region in this sample we've got it running at 4k yeah it is uh something that hopefully can be fixed there's only the occasional hiccup and stutter otherwise so i'm really optimistic about this one 4k 60 on a gtx 1080 that's pretty good going and i wonder how much more you can get out of a more kind of enthusiast grade card like a, you know a 1060 or a rx 580 we'll have to see nearer release Anyway, that's it for today, Dave. Thanks so much for joining me. No worries, Tom. If you did want to see this 4K file at its original source quality, you can catch that on our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and want to see more. But until next time, from me and Dave, thanks for watching.